Hello, today I want to take you through using a new feature of the latest refresh of the XML feature pack, the Thin Client. So I want to try to show you how to get up and working with the XML feature pack and the Thin Client within a minimal time frame. So let's go ahead and start with our Eclipse. So we'll create a new Java project. Let's just call it Hello World XML. And we'll finish. And as a library for the project, let's go ahead and download the Thin Client from the Open Beta website. So if you go to the link that was on the blog, you can go down um, and click on the local install and agree to the terms. Click on download using HTTP and look for the thin client for XML. It's a 14 meg jar file and you go ahead and download that and save it to your project directory. So now if we go back over to Eclipse and we refresh we should set out now see the thin client in our project. So we'll add a dependency on that. Okay, so now you'll see it's as a reference library. We'll go back out to the blog and I have each of the files downloadable individually, but the easiest way to download this demo is just go ahead and download the zip file. And go ahead and unzip that zip file and go back to your Eclipse project and refresh. And you can see that now I've added um, some very simple things. So I've added in the Java commands to execute. I've added a simple batch file so you can see how to run it. And let's start with a data file. So this is a very simple data file that includes some locations. You can see that there's some locations that are just specified. There are some that are popular and some that are unpopular. So let's look at a simple XSL that might run against it. So maybe we want to reorganize that file to write out the normal locations followed by the popular locations. And you can see that I'm using XSL and XPath to select um, each one of those groups, whether popular is yes or popular is no and it, or isn't specified. Similarly, in an XQuery file, I write out the normal locations followed by the popular locations, but now instead of using XSL templates, I use flower within XQuery. And I'll show you an XPath from the command line as well. So how do we invoke these? So let's look at a simple um, invocation against this data for XPath. So this is just a simple uh, J2SE program that imports the XML feature pack uh, API. It creates a factory, which you've seen in previous demos. It creates some output parameters to stylize how the output will be written. It takes the second argument in the command line for the XPath that's going to be run and it takes the first argument in the command line for where the data is going to come from and just loads that from a file. Uh, for very simple example, it's going to write the output to system.out and it's going to write it with those output parameters to make sure it's stylized. If we want to look at XSLT, very, very simple, uh, similar. Again, create a factory and now instead of preparing an XPath, uh, we prepare an XSLT uh, based upon uh, the second argument. So whatever file that points to will we'll load up as an XSL XSLT executable and we'll load the input from the first argument much like we did in XPath and we'll just again uh, put the result out to system out. Finally for XQuery, very very similar. So we'll create a factory and we'll do the output parameters to stylize the output. We'll prepare the XQuery um, based on the file that's the second argument passed to the command line. And again, the input comes from the first argument. 
and we'll write the output to system out with that stylized output. So what does it look like? So if I r look at run.command, you'll see that I just invoke Java. I say the class path is where I compiled those three uh, samples to. Um, I put the thin client in to my class path, and then I run the three commands that I sh just showed. You can see I'm passing it the input of locations for each one. Um, in XPath, I'm just putting out um, any popular location, and then in XSL and XQuery, run the two files that I've showed you. So if I do run that command, you'll see the XPath executes first. And you can see that it prints out the popular locations. You can see that uh, XSLT runs second, and you can see that it uh, prints out the um, normal locations followed by the popular locations. And then you can see finally XQuery runs third, uh, outputting a very similar output. So hopefully that showed you in about five minutes of how to use the XML feature pack and start to evaluate the technology that's contained. And uh, if you have questions, just leave them on the blog. Thanks.